Donald Trump just launched Truth Social, his answer to Twitter. And when I say answer to Twitter, I mean it's basically a Twitter clone, except it doesn't work properly and you have to get on a waiting list to actually join the website. Well, there was a lot of hype around this particular app because Donald Trump can finally tweet again, except it's already crashing and burning and not many people are using the app, including Donald Trump himself. So as Meredith McGraw and Rebecca Kern of Politico explain, at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Florida, speculation of a 2024 presidential bid by former President Donald Trump loomed large, but fanfare about his Truth Social app that had launched earlier that week? There was hardly any. Trump mentioned the app in passing only a few times on stage. People, including Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, name-dropped Truth Social, but there was barely any buzz at the conference about the app. Other than Trump, what makes a platform compelling enough to come back over and over again. How is it any different than Twitter and Parler, said one Republican digital strategist who spoke on the condition of anonymity to speak candidly about different conservative apps. After Twitter permanently suspended Trump, the self-proclaimed Ernest Hemingway of 140 characters vowed to turn the social media world upside down with a platform of his own, but well more than a year later, his platform has failed to prove it's ready to cause the kind of disruption he imagined. Worse, there's not much public enthusiasm around the current venture. Top figures in Trump world are barely using the app. Some give the verbal equivalent of a shrug when asked about it. And Trump himself has only posted one, quote, truth. And therein lies the problem. Trump himself doesn't even believe in the app, but even if he was really active on this app and he used it really frequently, what's the point of a social media application that revolves around one person? How is that fun? And furthermore, that kind of defeats the purpose of social media if you're just existing in an echo chamber because conservatives, they log on and then what? They circle jerk about Trump being good? I just don't get how this is fun. And when you think about the way that uh, websites like Facebook algorithmically keep people engaged on these platforms, well, they try to put people against each other, try to show people more uh, content that will make them angry or more willing to fight with other people. So when you don't have any of that, you really have no reason to in turn, uh, to return, no, uh, no ways of keeping people engaged. It's just Trump is awesome. Yeah, let's circle jerk about Trump. That's great and all. And perhaps, you know, there was some legitimate enthusiasm at the beginning, but that's going to get boring. And the bigger issue here is Truth Social's lack of originality. It looks exactly like Twitter. Embarrassingly so. Look at these screenshots. It's laid out just like Twitter. The verified symbol looks just like Twitter's. Tweets are called truths here. It's utterly shameless. So the question is, when given the choice between... Truth Social, a Twitter clone that doesn't work properly and forces you to get on a waiting list to use the app, or just using Twitter where people are, which would you use? People are already answering that question. But more from Politico here. Approximately 313,000 people follow Trump on Truth Social, just a fraction of the more than 85 million who once followed him on Twitter. That could be due in part to a waiting list to get onto the site that is still hundreds of thousands of people long, but many major players in the conservative world also aren't on the app. There are no verified accounts for Trump's former advisors, Steve Bannon and Rudy Giuliani, although unverified accounts exist, based on a search Tuesday. While top conservative talk show host Dan Bongino has an account Glenn Beck and Tucker Carlson did not appear in the search, and the app itself has been tripped up with technical difficulties from the moment it launched for a limited number of users on February 20th. For being a social media platform, there is little social interaction among users, say some of the individuals who have joined from waitlists. This raises questions about its ability to compete with major Silicon Valley platforms, even if it can garner the user base. The rocky start has raised questions about Truth Social's viability, especially as it joins other conservative-leaning social media platforms including Getter, Parler, Gab, and video streaming site Rumble, all of which are trying to draw Trump supporters with promises of less content moderation. Fair point. Now, what's interesting is that this, in a way, is conservatives inadvertently telling us that they don't actually believe the bullshit that they're espousing about the censorship that they're seeing on social media platforms. If you look at the daily top tens on Facebook, it's all conservative content. 
Ben Shapiro, number one. The Daily Wire, number two. The Daily Wire, number three. Ben Shapiro, number four. Dan Bongino, number five. I mean, it's nothing but conservatives. So they know that they already dominate these platforms. So why would they go to a different platform with smaller user bases and they're going to reach less people? They're speaking specifically or exclusively, I should say, to people who already agree with them. I mean, you want to broaden your reach, right? You want to perhaps penetrate normie circles online. So why would you just go to far right echo chambers? It's just a bad business model. If you already are a social media star like Ben Shapiro, for example, who trends on uh, Facebook daily, and it's just boring. Who wants to use this? Who wants to go to this website and just talk to other Trump supporters? You're just going to repost flag emojis. I just don't get the point. And I'll tell you how boring this site is. So I originally had attended on making an account so I can troll, but I forgot about it. And then I just decided, eh, what's the point? Because why even troll a website when there's nobody there to troll? So when you can't even create a website that lures in trolls at a minimum, you know that you've got a failed product. So it's already crashing and burning after less than two weeks, I believe, of it launching. And it's sad, but it speaks to Trump's waning star power. I mean, look, I won't deny the fact that in the event the GOP primary were held today for the 2024 presidential election, he would dominate that. But little by little, he is losing his influence more that he is out of the public eye. And that's good. Hopefully, his cult will just move on, but it's hard to say. Either way, um, I take pure joy out of this story because I think it's just funny that this website is crashing and burning already. You know, he got banned from Twitter, so his response was, okay, fine, I'll make my own. And then within weeks, it's already DOA. So again, this is kind of just like it's, it's beta period. Apparently, they haven't officially launched. Perhaps that's damage control. Either way, um, you know, Truth Social is already a failure and you love to see it. Sorry, but it's true. I think this is funny. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.